In today's tutorial, we will create a paint-like drawing app using JavaScript and HTML canvas. In this app, the user will be able to draw with his mouse, select any color that he'd like, and also adjust the width of the drawing. As always, you can find the link to the source code in the description down below. And now, without further ado, let's get started. First, we will start with the HTML markup. I start off with a standard HTML5 boilerplate. In the head, I will link the styles.css file that we will create later. In the body, we will create a section with a class of container, and this will hold the drawing board and the toolbar. Let's implement the toolbar first. It will be a simple div with an ID of toolbar. Inside that, we will create a logo inside an H1, which will be a text with a gradient overlay, and below that, we will add our inputs. First, we will add a color picker, which will define our stroke color. To do that, we will create an input element and set the type to color. We will also set the ID and name attributes to the value of stroke. The ID will help us identify this field from JavaScript and the name will be used for labeling. Now we can add the label with the value of stroke and provide the for attribute with the name of our input field, which is stroke. Our next input will define the drawing width of our line. For that we will use an input with the type number and we also set a default value of 5. The ID and name here will be line width and we can also add the label with the value of line width and provide the for attribute of line width to it. The last item that we will add to our toolbar is a button called clear and we will use this to clear the drawing board. It will have an ID of clear, so we can identify it easily from JavaScript. Now we only have to add the drawing board. We will create a container div for it with a class of drawing board. Inside that we will create a canvas with an ID of drawing board, which we will use to draw on the screen. Lastly we have to include the JavaScript file that we will create later as the last element of our body. If we save everything and open the page in our browser, we can see that we have working inputs a color picker and a number picker, but it looks really bad. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the like button below. So let's jump into CSS and make it nicer. First we will remove every browser default margins and paddings from the body and set its height to 100% to fill the whole viewport. We'll also remove the scroll bar on the right side by providing overflow hidden. Next we will add a gradient overlay to our logo. Next we are set 100% height to the container div, so the drawing board and the toolbar will fill the whole viewport, and also place them next to each other by setting display flex. We will also use flexbox for the toolbar. We will set flex direction column, so they will be stacked below each other, set a little spacing with padding, apply a fixed width, and set a dark background color. To make the toolbar layout more spacious, we will apply 6 pixels of bottom margin to every element inside the toolbar. We'll also set a smaller font size for the labels and make the input fields full width. Lastly, for the clear button, we'll set a blue background and white color, remove the borders, set a little border radius and give a little bit more spacing with padding. Now if you save everything and open up our site, we can see that we have a much nicer layout. Let's add the functionality with JavaScript now. In our index.js file, first we will save the references for the toolbar and the canvas elements. We can do that by using getElementById and provide the ID of these elements. Next we have to get the drawing context of the canvas and we can do that by calling the getContext method and provide 2D as a parameter because we want to draw in two dimension. Next we have to get the horizontal and vertical offsets of the canvas, which tells the distance the canvas has from the viewport. In this example, the left offset will be 70 pixels, as we have a toolbar which has 70 pixels of width, and the top offset will be zero, as we don't have anything above our canvas. Now we have to specify the exact width and height of our canvas. To make the canvas take the full remaining space, we have to get the window's inner width and height and subtract the matching offsets. So we will subtract the offset x from the inner width and the offset y from the inner height. 
Next, we will create some global variables. The is painting variable will be defining whether we are currently drawing or not. We will initialize this as false. To hold the width of our line, we will store it in this line width variable and we will initialize this as 5. The user will be able to change the value of this variable by setting a new value in the input field. We will have two more global variables, start x and start y, which will hold the x and y coordinates where we started the drawing from. Make sure you declare and define these variables with let because the value will change over time. Now we will set a click event listener for the toolbar and when the clear button is clicked, so the target ID is clear, then we will call the clear rect method of the canvas context. This will set every pixel to white in the provided area and we want to clear the whole canvas, so we have to provide the canvas width and canvas height. Next we will handle the input changes inside our toolbar. To handle this, we will add a change event listener to our toolbar. If the event target's ID is stroke, so the stroke color was changed, we will set the context stroke style to the new value. If the line width was changed, then we will modify the value of our global line width variable. Now we are finished with the toolbar functionalities, so let's add the drawing mechanism. We will start drawing when the user clicks down the button, so we have to add a mouse down event listener to our canvas. Inside the event handler, we will set the ispating variable to true, because we started to draw, and we will save the x and y coordinates where we started the drawing from. We can use the client x and client y values from the event, because these hold the x and y coordinates of the mouse when the event triggered. We also have to add an event listener to the mouse up event, which occurs when we finish drawing. Inside the event handler, we will set the is painting variable to false because we are not drawing anymore. We also have to call the stroke method of the context to color our line, and we will also call the begin path method, which can be strange for you because we just finished drawing. This is needed to close the path that we draw. So when we next want to draw a line, we won't continue the previous one, but start a new one. Let me show you how it would look like. So if we delete begin path and start to draw a line, when we finish our little line and start to draw a new one, we see that the previous line is continued. That is what we want to avoid. Don't worry that the drawing is not working for you at this time, because it shouldn't, but it will work soon, I promise. The last event listener that we had to add is mouse move. We will handle the drawing here, so let's create a draw function that we will use as an event handler. Inside the draw function, if the is painting variable is false, then we will simple return because we don't want to draw. Otherwise, we will set the line width of the context with our global variable line width, set the line cap to round to have a pen like effect. Then we have everything set up to start the actual drawing. We will use the line to method and provide the x and y coordinates. This will begin a new path and start drawing the line. The important thing here is that we have to subtract the offset x from the client x. If we do not do that, like in this example, the line will be offsetted from the current mouse position. If you pay attention closely, you can see that it is offsetted by exactly 70 pixels, which is the width of our toolbar. Lastly, we have to call the stroke method of the context to colorize our line. We have to call it here to see the progression when we draw. If we remove it and save everything and open up our page, we can see that the line we draw only appears when we release the mouse button. So let's add it back to have our desired behavior. And that's it. Now you have a fully working drawing app using only React and HTML canvas. Feel free to go ahead and add more features into this app and share your project with us down below the comment section. So this is it for today's video. I hope you learned something new and useful and I see you guys in the next video.